Hey everyone, Sean Smith here with Dedicated Commercial Recovery in Roseville, Minnesota. I'm the founder and CEO doing our vlog on five lessons I've learned in business. And these are kind of five random things that just kind of struck me today as I was sitting there writing out this vlog and I thought I'd share with you. I hope you enjoy, but I'll jump right into it. So the first thing is this is in John Maxwell's book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, which I kind of call the Leadership Bible. It's my favorite leadership book. Um, he talks about the law of the lid and that's a law of your leadership capacity. And this was a huge lesson for me because I realized there's only really two ways to grow as a leader. One that's investing in yourself. So whether it's, you know, listening to podcasts, reading books, watching Ted talks, uh, going to things like the global leadership summit, different things like that. You have to grow yourself, grow your capacity. So kind of like if you take a bucket and you fill it with water, it gets to the brim, that's all it has. So the only way to grow more is to grow that container or grow your leadership capacity. Uh, the second way of doing that was to get other buckets or, or surround yourself with other leaders who have greater capacities. And for me, I've really focused on surrounding myself with leaders who are better at the things I'm not good at and listening to their advice and letting them lead and collaborating with them. And so I've kind of take, uh, taken a multi-pronged approach to that where I'm, I'm focusing on both and it has made a huge difference for me. So I, I hope that's a benefit to you. A second thing is this is I was very specific when I started dedicated to know my schedule and stick to it. And it's been a refinement and kind of a battle over the years. Um, you know, your time can just get sucked up so many different ways, but I know my schedule when I'm working out, when I'm in the office, when I'm with my family, when I'm going to church, you know, all of these things are planned out in advance. So that's my schedule and I'm sticking to it. And it, it's allowed me to build dedicated really primarily working 45 hours or less in office per week. Now I work at home and over the weekends and stuff sometimes, but usually that's when my children's gone to bed or something like that, or when we have some downtime. So knowing your schedule, sticking to it, really important. Next thing is this is, again, big lesson for me is when I started Dedicated, we didn't really start with a f as a for purpose company. We evolved into that. I had wanted to start a nonprofit and a while back there was all this stuff going on with the IRS where anything that was Christian or conservative or anything like that got thrown out or messed with or whatever and that's what happened to us. Our IRS agent actually was convicted of fraud three different times and she still somehow works at the IRS. But we're now doing that again. We're going back through the process. But what it did is it forced me to give uh, directly out of dedicated and I had seen some metric givings like a Tom shoes or a Walgreens one for one and a lot of other companies now are starting to grow in this sector where they're really a for purpose company versus a just for profit company and the authenticity of that and really being interwoven in everything we do was really important and I had no idea of the benefits that would come from that. It was really a game changer for dedicated uh, from higher client retention, signing more clients to fast growth to our team members sticking around, uh, you know, an average turnover rate of I think somewhere between 14 and 20 percent, which is amazing for our industry. Uh, these were all good benefits. So. If you can move your company or your team towards a for purpose motive and it's authentically interwoven with everything that you do, it is massively beneficial. It has been a game changer for us uh, and for myself, quite frankly, as a leader here. Uh, next thing is this is uh, be a servant leader. I think there's a lot of leaders out there and they don't lead by example. They're not out in front of their team. Um, they're back there trying to call the shots, their team doesn't respect them. Uh, they're asking them to work harder than they're willing to work. And I've tried to always be the person out in front, working hard, uh, you know, leading our team by example, not just by position. No one really follows a positional leader because they want to, maybe because they have to, and that's temporary. So be a servant leader who's out in front of your team. Uh, and last is this is, and again, this is my personal experience, but there's no success, there's no next level, your business doing this, that, or you getting a promotion. Uh, there's no material possession like a house or a new car or any of that stuff that's then you're gonna be happy or you're gonna have a lot more joy in your life. That is a fallacy that the world is trying to promote that's just not there. 
Um, it is always temporary. It's temporarily exciting. And then it just becomes part of your life and you start looking at the next thing. Uh, choosing to focus on chasing significance and being significant to other people in your life over success has for me, again, just personally led to so much more joy and fulfillment in what I do um, than uh, the, any success dedicated has ever brought. I mean, the fact that we've been a part of freeing child slaves or feeding those who are starving or helping families who've lost someone in combat, that is infinitely more meaningful to me and to my team uh, than any benchmark success or new car or anything like that. So again, these are just five things that came to me that are lessons I've learned in business. I hope they're beneficial to you. As always, thank you for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, comment. We really appreciate that. And as always, God bless.